My team and I have used the monorepo for over a year and here is my honest opinion. With this video in mind, I would like to help you to decide whether you should go with a monorepo for your new project or even an existing one or whether you should completely abandon this idea. I will talk purely from my own experience because I know that there are a lot of videos comparing pros and cons of monorepos, so I think this will be a very interesting video for you. As always, I will try to make this video as valuable as possible to you and in return, I will simply ask you to leave a like. And if you're ready, let's get started. To better understand my thought process, I think it would be valuable to go back in time and see where monorepos evening came from. For that, I will take you to the blackboard. So back in my days, as a grandpa would say, we had one big repository and all of our code base would simply live inside it. Let's say in our case, it's a monolith service that has multiple routes and points that is an API and serves clients. So we would simply dump all of that into one single repository and be happy. But then we became more advanced. We realized that actually we can like separate the concerns and we can create multiple different services for our endpoints. Let's say a user service, I don't know, a payment service, and all of them could live separately, but with the same repository, which led to confusion, which is if one of these, if, if these microservices can live on their own, so they, they have their own data, they have their own controllers, their own functionality. Why do, we, why do they have to live in the same repository? Because they, are, they, are, they should be able to be configured separately and they shouldn't in fact know about each other, right? And then we came up with this genius idea of putting everything into different repositories like you see here. Now, the thing here is that we have only four repositories in this example, but in real case scenarios, they in a, for a mid-sized comp or mid-sized product, they can go up to 10 or 15. That's a very big headache if you've ever dealt with that. Okay, and now inter the interesting part comes here. So let's say even if we have one repository and we will assign this service to be a shared service, meaning a shared service is giving some functionality to this service. So this service is also using the shared service and this one, for example, some, let's say helper functions that every microservice can use from. All right. And let's say we have the same picture here. So this repository or this code base is going to be sharing its code with other repositories. And as you can see, the, the, the criticism or the point about that making, putting microservices into their own repositories to prevent coupling doesn't really work. In any case, if you have a shared service, you're going to have at least some degree of coupling. So from my point of view, coupling really doesn't does, doesn't matter here. As you can see, in this case, we have coupling. And in this case, we have coupling here as well. So it's kind of an intrinsic coupling. And the need for different repositories can actually be misleading. So with that context in mind, what would a good monorepo look like in the real world? Well, first of all, upgrading frameworks and shared libraries is going to be much easier because you only have a single source of truth to update and all child projects are inheriting from it. Otherwise, you would really go into every repository and try to upgrade this package for it, which would take ages. Second of all, you have a really healthy builds and CI CD setup. Meaning if you push into your mono, if you push the code into your monorepo, you don't want some random pipeline starting, but rather you can separate your monorepo by folders and every folder is going to trigger a separate pipeline. So for example, you have a backend folder and you have a frontend folder and inside the backend folder, you have folders for every, each microservice. If you push into the first microservice, you want the pipeline to start or the build pipeline to start only for this microservice and not 
the others. This is the best practice. Of course, to make this all work, you would need your developers to be very familiar with, with the monorepo tooling. Because monorepos that come nowadays, that you can use nowadays, for example, NX, Turbo Repo, Bazel, and so on, they have a lot of out-of-the-box commands that can simplify your life, but still there is some learning curve and you will be you have to be familiar with them. For example, I'm talking about commands like affected triggers, meaning if you have a whole monorepo and you did changes only to a couple files and now you want to run tests on your monorepo, you can trigger a command that will only run the tests for the files that have been changed or affected and not for the whole repository. This will obviously save time. Also, another crucial idea when it comes to monorepos, I think, is trunk-based development and pair programming. Okay, I will, I will explain everything. So usually what developers do is they create a branch from the main branch, work on this branch or feature or a bug, doesn't matter what it is. And then after they are finished, they merge this branch to main. This could work well, but since you're managing a big monorepo which, with a lot of code, pull requests can get a bit tricky. So people usually suggest to switch to trunk-based development, meaning you only take the main branch as the source of truth and you're pushing everything into your main branch. It sounds crazy, but actually a lot of companies, including Facebook and a lot of other companies, do that. Or if you consider this idea crazy, you can still have branches, but these branches should be short lived. Meaning you make sure that a branch doesn't live longer than a couple of days and you merge it quickly to the main. Because otherwise managing these branches would be simply difficult. You can read more about trunk based development in the link below that I pasted. I think it's going to be quite interesting. Also, there's this criticism where people say that it's easy to break your code in monorepos, but I don't fully agree with that. I think you can make atomic commits to your specific folder or branches. I really think people forgot that you have folders and this is a natural way of dividing things. You simply divide your microservices by folders or your micro frontends, doesn't matter. And if you push into one folder, it doesn't affect your other folder you have clear separation of concern. Well, to be honest, there are some shortcomings as well. For example, a valid criticism is people from other teams would accidentally interfere with your code and break things since they aren't involved in the code logic that you wrote a day ago. I totally agree. If you have three teams working on the same monorepo and the third team is not aware of what you're working on, they can accidentally touch your code and break it. The solution is make sure that no more than one team is using a specific monorepo. Okay, now another side of the story is that a lot of large, large companies like Google, Facebook are using monorepos. How do they even manage that? If you're using a monorepo, maybe I should use it too, which is not really the answer. The thing is, these big companies have a de dedicated teams that are maintaining these monorepos and are consistently building monorepo related features or tooling. And also these large companies don't really use Git that we are using, but they're using a, an advanced or a patched version of Git, which has extra functionality. If you, if you wanna read more about what kind of a Git Microsoft is using, for example, check out the description. So here's my final opinion about all of that. And I think the right answer really depends on the organizational structure. So if you have a team amongst other teams working in a large organization and your team is only concerned about a specific set of services that only your team touches and no other team, then monorepo can be the right choice for you. For example, you know that you're using a monorepo and if you add multiple projects, these projects should be designed to live and evolve together. If these projects have dependencies between them, and when you change a dependency, you will also change the consumer, let's say, and then you have clearly no value in splitting them into multiple repositories. In this case, monorepo is the right choice for you. If let's say you have a set of services and developers from multiple teams work on them, then don't use a monorepo. But even then, I think a well-organized monorepo wouldn't really hurt you. Same for a medium organization with fewer teams or smaller teams, but poly repos are also fine as long as the number of services doesn't get out of control. Also, if you're a small startup 
with a small dev team, just go whatever is easier for you to get the job done. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to check out my other playlist on system designs and architecture. I think there will be some similar content you might benefit from. I'll see you in the next one.